What's going on, all you amazingly beautiful people? So as you can see here, I want to ask you something. But before I ask you that question, I want to share something with you, and it's going to be relevant. So what I want to let you know is I have a friend who doesn't listen, uh, very self-centered, and is rude and inconsiderate. So I don't know if you know anybody like this, but just to kind of sum this up, it's kind of like that person when you hang out with them, you feel worse about yourself than when you started hanging out with that person. And it's that type of person that when they want to hang out, you do anything and everything you can to avoid it, and you dread it when you do not have an excuse and you have to hang out with this person. Like I said, I don't know if you know anybody like this, but my friend is really rude and I just really don't like hanging out with this person. I just, it just is not a fun situation to be in. All right. Now, if I were to ask you, would you like to meet this person? What would be your response? Now, if you're like most people, not to be mean or rude, but your response would probably be like, Jay, not really. Like, it doesn't sound like this person's fun to be around. And if you don't want to be around them, why do you think I would want to be around them? Right. And now if you're a really nice person, you might say, Jay, look, it's nothing against them. Like I, I, I want people to be who they are, but I just don't want to be around that. Like I have certain friends and people that I want to hang around. So more than likely, either way, you probably would not want to hang out with this person, right? Now, at this stage, all you know about this person, my friend, is what I've told you, right? So you've never met them. You don't know who they are, but I've told you this story. And based off of that, based on what I told you, it's kind of like, no, Jay, I really don't want to hang out with them at all, okay? But here's the thing. This is exactly the story that I just told you. You've never met them. This is exactly what is happening with organic chemistry. Meaning I've had so many students that are getting ready to take the class, have heard the stories about organic chemistry, even though they have to take the class. Like with my friend, you don't have to meet my friend. But with organic chemistry, students have to take it. They're hearing these horrible stories. It's a weed out course. Everybody's going to fail. You're going to fail with a lot of sarcasm. Good luck. And so would you want to take that class? Not at all, but you have to. So there's always that now there's going to be this anxiety and stress and frustration because you have to do something that does not sound like it's going to be fun at all. This is exactly what's happening with organic chemistry. So what I want to say here or ask you is, is my friend really self-centered? You've never met this person before. And in reality, I made this story up. I can't, I never thought of anybody. I just kind of made this story up, but I don't have a friend that I can think of that was exactly like this. So I basically made the whole story up. But really what this transitions into is, is organic chemistry actually difficult? Now, having done this for a very long time, what I have found is that when students get ready to take the class and then come to work me and they've never heard it, they haven't even been in the class, they're telling me all these stories, yeah, I heard it's hard, I'm really worried about it, I don't know how I'm going to do in this, but they don't know anything about it other than what people have told them. Or I have students that come to me and say, Jay, I'm in the class, it's challenging, it's exactly like I thought it was going to be because people told me these stories and now I don't know what to do. But here's the cool thing about this is that whether the students that come to me before they take the class don't know anything about it and the students that come to me while they're taking the class, what always happens in a short amount of time is the students are always like, Jay, like the way you're teaching, like this is a whole different organic chemistry than the way that I'm taught in my class. Like right here, it makes sense. It's easy. I'm understanding it. When I go to my class, like I don't fully understand what's going on in the class. It's a little confusing, but I'm able to take what you, you've you taught me and I can translate it into something else. And then I kind of, it makes sense. And so most students, when they work with me, the vast majority of them, it makes complete and total sense. And they feel like it's not difficult at all. And most of them say, Jay, like if my professor was teaching this way, it would be a lot easier. So here's the thing that I want to post to you. If you want organic chemistry to be difficult, if you want to believe the stories, I don't want to change your mind. All that is completely and totally up to you. But the most common reason why it's difficult is because the advice is read the textbook and work problems. And that'll give, that'll put you within the bell curve distribution, which the vast majority of students get a C or lower. So if there's nothing wrong with reading the textbook and working problems. I have students do that as well. But if that's all you're doing and there's not a fundamental understanding, it's not going to go well. However, if you're looking for organic chemistry to be fun, exciting, have a systematic approach, I'd love to work with you. So all you have to do is just reach out and get in touch.